Uh, wish us luck because this jump, as you tell, is pretty ridiculous. Oh shit! Welcome back to Norman's Garage, where we left off last time. We finished up our 25.5 chassis build, and that all looks pretty amazing, right? Now, today we're going to be working on cleaning up some stuff inside my wheel wells and making it safer. And then also, we're going to work on uh, mounting a parachute handle, which I have. Oh, it's hung up over there. So a parachute handle, and also getting my uh, my mounts welded in for my fire suppression bottle and also some seat belt mounts. And we'll go through how to set them up and how to get them correctly. But first I'm gonna focus on these wheel wells. So before I do anything, I need to get these rest of these brake lines out. But what I really wanna do in here is, so I wanna get a lot of this nasty undercoating off for one. Not that that's a problem, I just wanna get it out of there so I can do some stuff and make it better. Because for one, this whole pinch weld, I want to get rid of it so I want to cut small sections and weld it and then cut the rest weld the rest whatever and I want to stitch weld some of this stuff up in here get it stronger and then I also want to heat and beat some spots you know you see here where it was uh my tires were rubbing here and there and there and there so a couple different places I want to make a little bit more room not that my tires were getting cut at all, but you know, you can obviously see a couple spots where when we we're turning hard and stuff like that and hitting bumps that it was doing it. I don't want anything to compromise the tires because your tires go, you go, right? So uh big thing definitely is this pinch weld. I mean, that's just a sharp edge. I mean, you can see I've beat it over and stuff, but that's that's not all the way right. I want this to be legit, right? So that's what we're going to be doing. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and get these brake lines out of here. And I'm actually going to put some aircraft remover on all this stuff. Let it sit and see what we do. I couldn't find real aircraft remover in the regular hardware store. Got this quick strip stuff. We'll see what it does. Do a montage. And I'm going to go through with a hammer and a scraper. And we're going to get all this stuff up to the best that we can. Okay, so now between a mixture of scraping, beating, grinding, and paint stripper, and torching, a little bit of everything, I've got this pretty well down to bare metal. I've got all the seam sealer out of the seams, so I can go ahead and start tacking them. There's a couple of spots in here I want to heat and beat, and all, all over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do those first, um, and then I'll start attacking these, these big seams. But... so sorry it's a little dark but if you look here see we got our um pinch weld all taken care of that's all welded up i gotta grind that all down smooth it always sucks welding to that factory stuff but it doesn't look too bad it's good and strong and i'll go ahead and smooth that out with a flap disc i also on all the seams where i took the seam sealer out i kind of just tacked all the way along it just to help it out with rigidity that's like all your plates where your upper strut mount and upper control arm mount and everything are so figured it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and tack all those so go ahead and do the other side and then grind all these welds down to where it's all smooth because the end goal here is to not have anything sharp inside of the wheel well that can potentially cut your tire so see i heated and beat it a little bit in there 
and also there i'll grind those out smooth it'll look a little bit better um but yeah like i said the end goal is to have plenty of clearance for your tires and also not have any sort of sharp edge in here to where if your suspension does travel a little bit more on shutdown or something that it does not cut your tire so if you look up in here that's all like a nice decent weld i'm still going to grind it down smooth because i mean realistically it's not super structural anymore because we have you know our bars tying in our suspension points but still all this stuff up here i want to make it like nice and smooth to where you can just run your finger across it and it's super smooth to where if your tire touches it any of this stuff that it'll just it'll just rub it won't cut because a lot of people cut and db slicks and have all sorts of stuff happen i don't want that to happen to me so go ahead and grind this out and then we'll move on to doing our uh, seat belts and our fire suppression bottle mount okay so went ahead and pulled my fire bottle out of storage and this is just a safe craft with uh, two nozzles I'm not gonna mount the nozzles yet but i do need this for mock up on the bottle got these weld on brackets from tim mccamus or jerry bickle race cars one of them too i'm gonna weld these to the roll cage got some seat belt mount tabs here got a nice funny car cage window neck kit from art so that'll actually fit up in there nicely and then i've got my parachute handle here so i need to go ahead and get the seat in the car again and then i can mock up everything uh for the parachute handle and the window net and my seat bra seat belt brackets so uh also i'm going to be mounting that fire bottle that's going to be as pretty much as, as front right as possible because it is heavy and you want to offset the way of the driver and keep weight on the front tires so we're going to put that there but uh i'll see you guys once i got the seat back in the car and we'll be figuring some stuff out all right so got my seat all mounted back up i actually already kind of tacked up these brackets and they look pretty good there it's not a rare originally one or two but i really don't want it to get in the way of all my ECU wiring and everything else so it fits right there it's gonna give me plenty of room to bend my tubing and all and uh, the actual line will go fine so I'm gonna go ahead and get all this ticked up and we'll go from there okay so talk a little loud because I got TV on the background my bad um, Looked up my harness book, and your lap belt needs to be 45 to 60 degrees off of your, um, off of the bottom, and needs to go behind you. So that's good there. I've got a couple points marked out here. Go 45 here, and then your your crotch belt actually needs to be uh, behind the chest line, which is right down through here. I have my chest line marked down there, and I got another mark out for another seat belt there. So. The C is my chest line, so should be good there to go ahead and make up some brackets, which I already got them really, I just need to clean them up. But I want to do it to where they're sandwiched, and really should be it there. Now, as far as my parachute mount goes, I don't know where, I don't have it in here right now. We'll figure that out. I used to have it up here to where it was like, a, you know, come off the wheel. And then just grab but then this bar was in the way because it was all the way up here which still would be fine i see a lot of people with it back here and i really that's like that's a long way to go here down here would be fine come off the shifter there but i mean realistically you want your hand on the steering wheel to where i want it to be to where i just pull my hand off the steering wheel and straight up to the chute so i'm probably going to have it coming down about like this so I can just grab it um, don't want it to where you can just mistakenly pull it but uh, if you know you have your other uh, pin in the rest of the time so should be good my old fire suppression um, pull pin was here and I actually still like that because you can still come off the shifter and down here easily um, you know pull it pull it so you should be good there yeah, there's a lot going on down here, but, you know, it, it's fine. Um, so, going to get some seatbelt mounts up in here, and this parachute mount tacked on. It really was probably good where it was. It just, 
was interfering with this bar. I, I'm gonna have it coming down just a hair just where it doesn't hit this bar, but I like where it was, so we'll go from there. All right, so I got the fire bottle all, uh, or the fire suppression system all bolted up. That looks good, it's well supported. Now I've got my location for my seat belts. Now I'm just taking some of those tabs and bolted them together with this in the middle. And I'm gonna MIG tack them up front and then I'll go ahead and take them. Just, you know, get them to where they're good. And we'll be good to go. Net installed. I got one of the halves kind of cut down where I think it's gonna work. And got paint taken off. I think enough. Got a big tack again. Later on, I'll finish weld all this stuff. I just don't really feel like doing it all right now. So whenever you're mounting window neck do it on the inside of your chassis so the reason you want to do it on the inside of your chassis is because in the event of a rollover the window net is meant to keep your body inside the car right now I really might not even need one all the way but you know it's still required so but you want to make sure it stays inside the car if your window net is mounted on the outside here then guess what's gonna happen this is some pretty flimsy Stuff, not saying it's not safe, but on the outside of the car, if you're rolling and skipping across pavement, guess what's coming off? That window net's coming off. So you want to make sure that this is on the inside of everything so that you are good. I'm going to try to get there just inside the 20 car here. I know this isn't super technical, but you know. I want to make sure that I got there we go right there. I like that. Tack it. I'm not happy with it. Okay. All right, so got this all mounted up all good. You can still get your bolts out at the bottom, which is a good thing. Uh, just gotta do some, you know, I'm gonna do some like long weld pieces on that and then finish weld up that. So also got my parachute handle all good here. Just got that all tacked up, but it's in a really good spot to where I can, without even building the habit, without looking for it anything, I just reach up and pull from my seat so i mean that's that's a really good spot i think it's even better than it used to be uh you always learn more when you do something more times right and this window net isn't saggy or anything like that like you see a lot of them uh, especially when i tighten it up it's going to be even better i might even kind of twist that up just a little bit oh well, that just came loose that's nice oh my cat came off nice all right I'll fix that and uh yeah finish weld up this finish weld up all my seat belt brackets and parachute handle and that's the end of this video so i know this was kind of a short video um however uh, next time is going to be a, a banger because it's going to be putting the floors in and getting a mock-up engine and actually seeing some stuff in this engine bay because from the beginning of this video to the end i actually have a change of plans um a local paint shop is going to actually take care of all the inside and the roll cage and everything else so that's a huge relief off me so i'm going to focus on getting the car assembled and everything else nicely like all my fab work done and then take everything back apart and send to the paint shop so should look a lot better that way it's a lot of stress off of me because i am not a painter by any means uh, however i am going to paint the bottom side of the cage before i put the floors in but 
um, you know, that's what we're doing next time. And uh, so next time you'll see a mock-up engine in here and possibly some turbo, a turbo mounted up, stuff like that. So stay tuned. Thank you.